so I'll, I'll share this story as something that's like been a thing that I've been thinking through regarding like the holiness and without being out of touch with the world question that, that y'all could, I think, add more detail to if you wish and if it brings up thoughts. So for me, when I think one of the most valuable experiences I think I've ever had in my life was in college, being able to play lacrosse and going to a public university where I did not have very many friends who were Christians. And as a, as a preface, I'm super grateful that the Lord kept me from falling into so many things that people tend to fall into in college. Um, cause dear God, it was not by my strength, mm-hmm. <laughs> but by him, yeah. cause the Lord knows I wanted to do some other stuff other times. Um, the Lord's hand. and so in it, something that I learned through college was like how to operate as a genuine Christian around non-believers without compromising, but with also not being like someone who's like distant and not able to just have like a conversation with people. Cause I think that's mm-hmm. the thing. If, if a Christian can't even have a conversation or any points of similarity with a non-believer, it's like, okay, like there's something going on here where either your pride doesn't allow you to see connecting points that you could be vulnerable in. Um, you're not enjoying just the gifts that God's given us in this world, whether it's sports, whether it's books, whether it's film, whatever that we can connect with, with people. Um, and we're not just like living life to where we can like the question of, Oh, what has your spring been like so far? Mm-hmm. Doesn't even come to mind. And so while I was in college, um, there were so many examples of like like playing lacrosse. Obviously, there's a ton of parties whenever you're playing sports, um, especially like the first year and then towards the end of college. Like I felt like the Lord was like, no, like go to these, like spend time with these yeah. teammates, get to know them, love them. And I've given you the self-control to be able to not drink, to be able to not drink until you're 21 um, and I, and as I did that, as I just lived life, they, they saw the consistency and they saw the genuine care that I had for them. And even though like the older teammates were like, ah, chase tonight, T- tonight. And, <laughs> and the ongoing jokes was like, nah, nah, not tonight. I think I'm good. I think I'm good in it. They saw this, like just genuine camaraderie being built, which yeah. from there is the foundation for them to be able to, to ask questions that then you're able to kind of share what like what your values and what your perspective and what the Lord's doing in your life. And then them being able to share things like I cannot count the number of times that teammates share things with me that they didn't share with anyone else. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy how even in that I felt comfortable sometimes sharing with my non-believing friends things that I didn't feel comfortable sharing with my Christian friends. And because there was this um, humility and this admission of, you know, I'm not perfect here Mm -hmm. that, that was present. And so in it, um, I mean, I, th- I think there's a lot of things just from that in general, but there's, in terms of like holiness and how to not be out of touch with the world, because that's just been a big question that I've been sitting on, especially as we're going into like volume two for Letters from Love Itself, because that's like a, a character trait among some of the writers to invite that I feel like the mm-hmm. Lord's told me to look for. Um, like there's like character consistency, there is genuine care for people, there is a genuine enjoyment of creation um, there is um, not a fear of people. Um, there is this um, not feeling like you have to be insulated or else you're going to be contaminated. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of other stuff that I felt like I learned from college that I'm able to identify among other people. Um, mm. But yeah, just as like a last thing, if that gives you any ideas or details or thoughts. Yeah, I, it's funny because I was thinking about, I was thinking this thought the other day. Uh, I almost put on a... <laughs> I almost put it on social media. I was like, how many, how many unsaved friends do you have? And they're just a question to the Christians. Um, because I think about this one relationship that I have in my life that the Lord told me not to retreat from. And they don't believe in the Lord. They don't believe in God at all. Uh, we've known each other for since sixth grade. It's my best friend. It's like my brother. And um, I've seen God through it all. Like, he's coming to church. He's The conversation we've had, like, um, he was like, yeah, you know, I'll pray for you. I'm like, what you talking about? Like, you know, <laughs> you going to pray for me? Huh? Like, who are you praying to first, mom? You know, like, <laughs> no, but it's like, when I think about, um, like, there's a, you said this thing of, like, this fear of people and, like, of the, the contamination. Like, there's one thing to place honor on somebody, like, who, like, you know, who is called to the church. Like, you're called to the church. You're called to be around a bunch of Christians and that's your ministry. 
But I think that there has to be, um, I feel like, the same level of honor of those who are called outside of the four walls as well. And I feel like it's going to be many more people that fit in the second category than the yeah. first, to be, be honest. Because, like, um, the Great Commission, obviously, and also there's just your call to certain people. I remember I was talking to a friend of mine. He's like, bro, I feel like I'm just, like, dying. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? He's just like, I go to church and da 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 And I'm like, I was like, oh, I know what it is. You're called to be out. And I was like, I've seen you out with people. Like, you are light and you shine. I said, you're like, not to say you're dying in the church. I guess the wrong kind of wording, but like, you're not in the lane that you're supposed to be in. So it feels like, it feels hard for you because you're not doing it. Like, you're not doing what you're called to do. You're not out talking to the people. You're not out sharing the light and sharing those things. And I think that, um, I think it's, for me, I, I think about that all the time. Like, say, I said, Lord, if, if you're calling me into, like, this whole, say, fashion world or whatever it looks like, like, I'm going to be surrounded by probably the majority of people who don't believe. And, like, I, like, I, I think that's an honor in a way, but there's, like, this still reverence of, like, stay holy. And, and there's this uh, level of accountability and there's a level of, um, yeah, just being able to love somebody and bring them to a table to meet the king like mm-hmm. like they like i mean many times they probably set the table for you but i'm like lord get us to a point um where we can set the table and invite them to the table and so um and that's good it reminds me of this one moment where i was at a wedding and the guy got up and he gave like a uh, a toast speech and and it was like i wish i could have record well they probably recorded it but I wish I could take it and show it to people because he was saved. His friend wasn't saved um, at the time when they met. And he just, he starts talking about his friend's character. And he was like, I remember many times we'll go out and you would never drink. I remember many times that like, we tried to party and da, 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 and you would never do that. He was like, well, I love the Lord and like, I love you, but I won't do that. And he was like, your consistency um, and even your authenticity um, through those moments showed me that God was real. And I think that's the key. It's like we get to be the light bearers of God no matter what situation we're in. And um, yeah, there will be temptation to dim your light. There will be temptation to say, oh, this probably is not a real thing. Like, But like the Lord has tasked us and granted us the opportunity to be in these spaces. And so it's like when I think about those testimonies of like that guy talking about his friend, I'm like, okay, like I get an opportunity to be a light bearer. Um, it may not be, it may not be me shoving scripture down his throat every single time, a best friend, but it is me showing love and speaking up about truth when it's that time to speak on. Because if we're if we're really friends, we should be able to talk about these things and not even have the same beliefs, you know. Um, and I think that that's just kind of what we we get to do as Christians, um, as believers of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You have anything? Yeah, Josue, anything? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, <clears throat> there's, where's that verse at? Yeah, pull up the theologian, young theologian. <laughs> young theologian. Yeah, don't act like you don't have that it. whole thing memorized. No. No. Nah, I don't have it. I wish I did. And the tablets of his heart. That would be cool. Mm. But the man got archives. Big tablets. <laughs> Look, he got yeah. archives from heaven. Nah, it says, uh, <clears throat> it says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To mm-hmm. the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. Um, so that's um, 2 Corinthians towards the end. And then if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians 2, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it's where he talks about you guys are the epistles. Mm-hmm. Um, written and read by all men, you know, so he kind of uses on one hand fragrance, another a letter that people were able to see. So, so it's, it would be strange for, um, for us to get saved and not deal with unbelievers, keep Mm -hmm. them away, um, type of deal, because it's like, well, who's going to go talk to them? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, who's going to go, um, even if for not, evangelism but you gotta build relationships with people yeah you know you gotta start a conversation with people um <clears throat> where we're not on the um this moral high ground to where we can associate with the lowly people that yeah. don't know god you know that's not how how that works you know we're called to um love people but like you said we still 
<clears throat> remain in this place where we're consecrated, we're given to him. But in so doing, we're effective in the world around us. We're a yeah. fragrance. You know what I'm saying? Nobody sprays perfume and sit at the house. You know, you spray perfume and you go outside and go stunt. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's <laughs> yeah, how you yeah, do yeah. it. You know, you you don't you don't just like write letters and keep it to yourself. You gotta, you know, um, share with others. You gonna tell me you're gonna start writing letters? No, no, that's not for uh, me. That's for that's that. not, someone in the other room might have just heard that. That's for the other creatives. You know, it's not for me. It's not my <laughs> gifting. You know? It's not my gifting. Um, but it's <clears throat> but it, it's it's a. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, we are a person. Like, we came to the Lord because some God used somebody to speak to us. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. in the same kind of way, that's how it goes. There's there's the sowing, there's the watering. Mm-hmm. God is bringing the increase. You know, we can't do that in a place that's already been sold in. You can only sow in bare ground. You know, you got to go somewhere else, start sowing and water. You know, so we just have to be mindful to, um, you know, it's not like, Man, I just got saved. God sent all the Christians to one island. Let us stay here before you're coming, and then we leave. No, that's that kind of defeats the point of the Great Commission, as you yeah. mentioned. Um, and I think one way we can truly, um, <clears throat> and I think Jesus said it best when he uses the example of loving people. If you only love those that love you back, what credit do you have? Yeah. Right? What better way to love people than those that actually don't like you very much? You know what I'm saying? And typically, your friends like you, your family likes you. But when you're around people that, you know, don't like you or love you, that's really when love is shown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I'm nice to you, I can't really I can't really say that I'm nice because it's easy to be nice to you guys. Yes, right. But if I'm nice to somebody who's not doing me good, then it mm-hmm. shows a different um, different character. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, so we, for us to really see... Some of these things we have to be around people that um, may I hate your God or mm-hmm. I hate you Christians. I hate what you guys stand for. You guys only judge us. You only do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And the Lord is going to place you in that place. So, yeah, this is a good place to shine. You know, it's a good place to be a light and things like that. So, yeah, let's, let's not get in this weird thing where we get saved and then we run away. Mm-hmm. And we get secluded. Um, we don't want to be contaminated, you know, from the world. So that's, yeah. Because especially in Texas, it can be so easy for Christians to only be friends with other Christian people. Oh, yeah. For sure, like, yeah. It is, yeah. For sure. mm-hmm. It's easy to get sucked into it, you know, because you kind of get comfortable mm-hmm. yeah. in that way. And everything may be good. Like, it's great. But then also it's like it, it, it could cause you to look at people a certain way. Yeah. Um, through Not through a lens of love, but through a lens of, you know, something else. And so it's like when you're saying about the love, I'm like, man, like if I'm if I'm sitting next to somebody that hates me, I, I think about love is patient, love is kind. I have to really actually right. <laughs> like do those things at this yeah. moment because you ain't really kind to me right now. Right, right, right. You yeah. don't like me, but I know that, um, that but if I know God to be true, I know that Jesus died on the cross for for me and for you, then I know like he cares that much for you as much as he cares as much for me. Like I, I happen to be the one that got saved and I want you to experience what I want what mm-hmm. I experienced myself. And so that's just it, you know, that we get that privilege to do that. And that.